The following is an Ice on Mars presentation. All right, let's talk about a movie made famous solely because of Wayne's World. That's right, The Graduate. No, it's it's Leprechaun. What the fuck? Damn. Hey everyone, this is Michael T. Bradley. And Audrey Ironsy. And we are here to talk about the 90s film Leprechaun, starring Jennifer Aniston, who you've never heard of before in your life. Yep. That's right. So let's talk about the, the plot here. Very, I, I guess the overarching plot is very basic, although <laughs> we'll get into some, some muddiness of, of the, the, the execution later. But basically a, a, a guy steals... Some gold from a leprechaun while he's at a, a funeral in Ireland. Brings it back to America with him. The leprechaun comes to get it because leprechauns are vindictive, vicious fucks. And he comes in a suitcase of some kind? No, he... <laughs> It's not in the suitcase. He just gets it in the suitcase after a bit. Oh. It's not It's not okay. like he literally flew in the suitcase yeah. all the way over gotcha. there. Or maybe he did. I, I don't know. Did. It's There's so much that's unclear here. So maybe he did. And, uh, the, and, and the guy hides the gold, has a stroke. Ten years later, people come and find the gold and accidentally let the leprechaun loose. And he terrorizes them trying to get his gold back. Is that... That pretty much sums it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're. Yeah. I think we're good there. Let's go ahead and jump into our what the fuck moments. Audrey, you want to start? Sure. A quote by Jennifer Anderson, Tori Redding in the film. It's the '90s. Women are equal now. Death by pogo stick. Flipping a car with a soapbox derby car he engineered in 20 seconds from a barn that appeared out of nowhere. The he there being a leprechaun. That's just right. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> this is very tough to sum up into a moment, but there are weird cuts in the middle of a scene, and it cuts back to the same scene, like a little flip happens, so you know time has elapsed, but literally like one to two lines has been cut out in that little wipe. Jennifer Aniston is still living with her father, and she seems she's like in her 20s, early yeah. 20s. Yeah, yeah this, seem, this has to be like two years before Friends of that. Yeah. Leprechauns are plug and play. At one point, the leprechaun pulls out somebody else's eye and shoves it into his eye socket because he's just lost his own. They can just adapt really easily, apparently. Yeah, and didn't he lose his hand, too? He did, and he just plugged that back on. But I guess the eye, because it's so mucousy or, or viscousy or whatever the hell ski word we want to end mm -hmm. with there. So let's talk about anybody's relationship to anybody else in this movie. Because the movie sure as hell didn't. <laughs> yeah, no, um, I just remember thinking Jennifer Aniston comes to, to visit this house with her new husband. Of course, not realizing that her husband is her father. Yeah. For what, a, a good 20, 25 minutes of the film? I, at least that, yeah, definitely. We were both kind of confused because he seemed a little older, but I, I mean, he doesn't seem so much older that he looks, they see, and, and they don't really have a father-daughter dynamic. Definitely not. And she didn't refer to him in any of that, it's like father, dad, for about 25 minutes. It's, it's, it's really not until he's damn near off screen that he's referred to that way, and we actually both thought there was kind of a love triangle going on. Because she... The, the neighbor kid. Well, well, the, the guy who's renovating the house, one of the three guys that paint, mm -hmm. as they're called. Yeah. The guy with the... Torn out shirts and the overshirt and Muscles, like the muscles, purple. Yeah, yeah, like feathered the feathered hair. Right, the wife beater underneath the purple torn shirt over that with I believe little triangles maybe. The Aussie uh, who was Francis from Pee Wee's Big Adventure, he had the sailboats and I believe the muscular guy had uh, had little triangles That's on right. his. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was very, it was kind of like, I don't know, Blossom and the Sticks overall. Definitely Jennifer Aniston's shorts. Yeah, yeah. There were, the fashion choices in this were interesting, to say the least. So we didn't realize that he was her father, and honestly, I mean, it, it made it make more sense in hindsight, because she's complaining the whole time that she comes there that, oh, this house is icky, and it's very, like, green acres, except there's a leprechaun in the basement. She misses Beverly Hills, she's got her flip phone, she actually doesn't belong there, and it wasn't until she saw the hot neighbor guy renovating the house that she decided to stay. Exactly. But at the same time, we still thought she was with her significant other, not her father, Right, like that this was, that this was like they were newly married and he was like, oh, I bought us a house. We're going to go live and be happy in the country. And she's like, 
putting up with it because she's like, well, I guess I love you. It was really unclear. And then once we realized that it was, it was actually her dad, that makes more sense. But it's a little strange because she's old enough. I mean, like at one point she's like, I'll go stay in a hotel for a while. I'll pay for it myself, implying that she's old enough to hold a job, has a job, has her own money. And so mm -hmm. it's like, why is she with him? Yeah. Perhaps the mother is sick and is going to be transferred in her like iron lung after a couple of weeks. And that was the entire point of moving out here, was to get some fresh open mountain air or whatever. Yeah, so I'm just writing here, where does dad go? He seems to disappear after a certain part in the movie and never comes back. They, they take him to the hospital. I actually ask myself that a couple of times. But they take him to the hospital because he gets bitten by the leprechaun pretending to be a cat. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and the dad is like, oh, there's a wounded cat in this hole yeah in this hole in a, in a tree, tree yeah. i'm gonna shove my hand in there because i mean even if it was just a cat it's most likely rabid and it will claw or bite you so i mean discounting the possibility of voice changing leprechauns it's just a stupid idea to begin and with. and it's just a stupid little cut too you could probably bandage that thing up after a few stitches and be on your way but if if it was rabies, he's probably there getting the first of like the eight injections okay. and everything. You know, I mean, that's that's most likely what had to happen. He's having those chest injections and frothing at the mouth for all we know at this point. And, and so his his side story is not a very pleasant one mm -hmm. either. But it was a little strange that literally he just drops out of the movie about 25 minutes in. Yep. It honestly, I thought, would have been a better, more interesting story with more dynamics if he was her husband and he drops out of the movie and we see the chemistry form between her and Joey from Blossom, you know, or John Schneider from Dukes of Hazard, or kind of a little Mark Singer. He, he was kind of, take all of those from like Beastmaster or V, wrap all those into one and you've got the hot guy in here who has... Well, he doesn't do this, but potentially he had the best form of flirting ever. Oh, yeah, story. yeah. I think uh, there was one moment where she was talking to him, and she was over by uh, a truck, and she starts feeling somebody caressing her leg from, from below, thinking it's him. Only it's not him. It's the leprechaun. So, That's right. Again, well, we're still thinking this is she's uh, cheating on her dad <laughs> <laughs> with the neighbor guy. It turns out it's the leprechaun. Right, and so she's like... Oh, this guy's flirting with me by, even though I just saw him walking away from me like literally four seconds ago, apparently he dove under this pickup truck and is now caressing my leg or my ankles. This is not a flirtation method I would ever go for. I gotta admit, is that has that ever worked on you, Audrey? I think it would work on me, actually. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The, the under the pickup truck ankle. Uh, okay, well, I gotta I gotta put that in my repertoire, I guess. <laughs> you know, mostly it's just uh, uh, sad stories about my youth, but <sighs> I don't get many dates anyway. So yeah, let's can we talk about some of these quips we got? Try as they will, try as they might, who steal my gold won't make it through the night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which, you know, in retrospect, oddly fits very well with this movie since it all takes place in one night. But literally he is on the earth for 10 years chasing down this one bag of gold, which might be the entirety of his loot. I don't know. It's never really made clear. Oh yeah, and we found him initially in, yeah, like I, like I said, coming out of the luggage and then being put in this crate with nothing to hold him there but... Four leaf clover. clover. Right, yeah. on top of the crate, which seems a little weak. And and then it's and then it's like knocked off and uh, he just bursts out and like I mean, obviously steps on the clover and just doesn't care anymore. Mm -hmm. The leprechaun's powers in general, I I mean and, and you know, we can come back to the quips, but the powers don't make any sense, are never really mapped out because it's like, okay, if he didn't stow away in the luggage, because that doesn't any goddamn sense. But it has to make sense because if he didn't stole away in the luggage, 
How did he follow this guy? How did he know where he is? Because we know from the movie that he apparently isn't able to, say, sniff out his gold, which would make sense, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it would make sense if he were able to say, oh, my gold is that way. But no, he just doesn't know. So I guess he literally did eat all this guy's clothes and snuggle into yeah. a suitcase. Apparently he um, can't see a rainbow either. Because once he's released, <laughs> there's a huge rainbow in the sky where the, some of the other characters go to collect his gold. But for some reason, he uh, fails to acknowledge that is the only place where he could actually find it. Right. It does seem like there were a lot of points in this movie where the entire plot could have... Where the entire like flow of the narrative could have just been stopped very quickly if anybody had, say, like, looked left or whatever, and they don't. But yeah, his quips are horrible. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the best is when he pries his hand off of the stovetop and then says, now we're cooking kids or something like that. Yeah. I mean, what he, he kills a cop, which let's talk about that scene in a second. He kills a cop, and after this long, drawn-out cat-and-mouse scene that goes on forever, his line is, well, that was fun. Just having nothing to do with a cop, the fact that he breaks his neck, the baton that was thrown at, nothing. Not, well, that was fun. Well, it seems that, you know, he wasn't just trying to get the people that took his gold. Anybody. Right. Anybody who was there, anyone that was um, in the scene, a cop passing by, they were all candidates. Yeah, it, it, so it seriously felt to me as if there was a script that was written, and at the end of it, basically everybody survives. And, you know, whether it was during the filming or at a point before that, somebody told, uh, what was his name here? I wrote it down. Mick, Mark Jones, the writer and director of this, you know, you got to put some more deaths in here. I mean, this is a horror movie, for God's sake. You know, it can't, uh, Poltergeist was the exception to the rule. You got to, you got to really draw some blood. And so he was like, uh, what if, what if a cop catches him in a little cute motor car and then we can play with that here and there? Yeah. And the cop just had absolute, I mean, there's, no reason to think the cop would know where his gold is. There's no reason for him to go after him. The leprechaun was just a dick. Yeah. He just keeps... Killing. Yeah, just killing anyone who comes across his path oh, and... Shining shoes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the, the other thing he does is, like, weird value judgments. It's like, you know, I bet the leprechaun would fat shame if he... Or, or slut shame if he had a chance. Like, at one point he says to Jennifer Aniston, Nice girl shouldn't pick clover. Like, it's just really odd value judgments, you know? Like, like yeah. I could picture him being like, white after Labor Day, I'm going to rip out your fucking right. throat. And right? what about his outfit? Uh, it was a like tailcoat <laughs> with those bubble button pink. Yeah, it, it, it was not flattering to poor Warwick. I, I really felt bad for Warwick throughout this, uh, this entire Yeah, didn't film. he at some point in the movie open a drawer, find a mirror, and take a look at himself and yeah. scare himself? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it really is kind of... Mark Jones obviously hates little people. <laughs> he was like, I want to make a movie that just showcases what vicious, terrible creatures little people are at heart. So you brought up the shoe shining, and we mentioned the uh, cop chasing him in his little, like, toy car, and, and, and there were just all these moments that were obviously not meant to be realistic. I think this film was trying to be funny. I think it was trying to be tongue-in-cheek. Yeah, I tricycles. Mean, yeah, there's a, there's a tricycle race. Skates. Right, roller skates, and then that perfect leprechaun-shaped, very uh, Looney Tunes, the shape in the fence where he slams through. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he sees the Lucky Charms, and he's like, oh, fuck you, or something, you he know? Yeah, he eats some, and he's it's like, cereal. this is disgusting, and like, I, I hate Lucky Charms, and I think that's meant to be funny. Yeah. Um, overall, though, those bits were really just, it, it was so confusing, because the film... It didn't feel like anyone making the film had really mastered their craft at this point. Mm -hmm. Except maybe Jennifer Aniston and the props people. Yeah. And I, I, I guess, like, I mean, like, uh, most of the actors, I think, were pretty good. They Francis just, was great. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they just weren't, they just weren't overall given maybe the best lines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, this wasn't Coen Brothers style yeah. material that they were given to work with. So I think, I think, I think the actors did a good job. But the, but the director... Uh, who also wrote it, neither the script nor the direction, really felt, it, it, it felt very, like, freshman to me. Like the first in a series of movies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose. But, you know, usually sequels get worse, right? I mean, usually it's that first one that has that magical flair that, that everybody wants to come back for. But I suppose by this point, Freddy was big, that kind of 
Freddy was uh, the Nightmare movies were never exactly tongue in cheek, but he was always very very cheeky and yes. sarcastic, yeah. right? Yeah. So so I think I think that was definitely what they're going for, but his quips never make any damn sense. And my biggest frustration through this entire film was the fact that his powers make no goddamn sense. Because he doesn't seem to use them when he needs to. And everybody else keeps forgetting them, though that happens in a horror movie all the time. But one of the big things is that he can teleport, okay? We know that he can teleport. At one point, he is inside a locked safe. He spends ten years in a wooden crate... After being 600 years old. That has a four-leaf clover on top of it. On top of the crate. That hasn't blown away or right. a spider hasn't carried it off. <laughs> and he never thought to, like, just teleport out? I mean, it's not any... It's like a foot and a half away from him. But again, why, why would you have to be in a, a little car? Why would you have to create your own little soapbox derby? Right. Why would you need to put roller skates on to travel? Right, right. You wouldn't. And and even if even if you could stick. Right. <laughs> even if you could count away all of those times by saying he can only teleport to a place he knows, okay? Let's let's pretend that's the case. He was in that goddamn cellar. Yeah. He saw that place. There is no definable reason because again, just his powers aren't even they aren't you know, this is something that's very important, I think, in a horror movie, is that you always have to delineate your bad guy's powers. Like, one of the things that really frustrated me is that through almost the entire film, it's, it's like, literally the last, like, 15 minutes or so that, that we get any sort of stopgap measure for him. Because up to that, I was like, there is no way to kill this thing. It is an evil, magical creature that can teleport, can, uh, you know, like, isn't bound by any rules because it's killing people that don't even know about the gold. Generally so by biting them and right. threatening to make their ears into shoes. Yeah, that's at one point, I, I thought that was probably the cleverest bit in the entire movie. At one point, they distract him by throwing shoes at him. Uh, and he, okay. he has to go shine them because... Anyone who goes into the cobbling business has to shine shoes that are thrown at them. Yeah, that so is a known fact. After he trashed the kitchen, the only evidence he left behind of, of his his presence was that he had shined all of Jennifer Anderson's shoes <laughs> and left them on the kitchen table. And what was weird about that is that before the cut, they're all like Wellington waiter boots. And then after the cut, they're all suede high heel shoes. And I, I don't know if he has the ability to shine shoes into pretty shoes? And he was shining suede, I think, at one moment. Well, that, that was after the cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was shining, shining, shining the suede, and I thought maybe he had shined the boots down to suede. It is, again, never clear. It could have been made out of someone's ear. <laughs> Perhaps. Perhaps he had saved up all that ear gristle from all the biting he had done in the movie. Because literally, that's what he does to three people is gnaws on them in some way, shape, or form, and then is like, okay, I'm good. Yeah. But similarly, on the flip side, our protagonists are like, oh, it's this evil creature who can teleport, you know, has a magical bag of gold, and calls himself a leprechaun. If I shoot him with a shotgun, he's obviously dead. Yeah, two-barrel shotgun, what, six rounds? Right, he's totally dead. Totally dead now. Yeah, that was weird. That... That shotgun was not a pump action, but it just kept going. One thing I wanted to talk about was the fact that the O'Grady's, from the beginning of the movie, it seemed we had left them and Mr. O'Grady had had a heart attack after he found his wife dead and having the leprechaun, you know, take on her voice and her personality and, and hold her He does her that there. a lot. Yeah, he seems to do that and mimic well, people very well. But instead of him actually dying, this house being abandoned, him having the gold last we knew after he had trapped him in this crate, we find out later that he's been at a like a rest home with no sign of his money being used. Well, what's weird to me about the fact or that he's... Or disability, actually. Well, yeah, and what's weird to me about him being in a rest home is he obviously still has his senses and knows that the leprechaun is trapped down there, yet he apparently is okay with selling the place. Mm -hmm. It's not like this is his son who lives far away and is... I mean, that would have tied the whole goddamn thing together, right? Is that this son who lives far away has to come here to take care of his dad. Take away the 10-year jump and... It all ties together. Yeah, that's what I would have changed about it. It just didn't make any sense. Why would you wait 10 years? Why is that guy still alive? Who is this 
this other man named Dan right. coming that's, in and taking the place over. Yeah, that, that's I, I, I kept thinking this movie is My Two Dans. Because yeah. it's in the 90s and everybody has shirts with little things on them. And the, the, for some reason the dad is named Dan and the guy who owned the place beforehand named, was named Dan. It was almost as if they were related but by first name. Yeah. <laughs> And and so, but but the dad says at one point, "Oh, I bought this place for a song or something like that." And so we know that this isn't inherited. Yeah. But you would think, yeah, if the leprechaun bursts out of the box, the first thing that he would do is go hunt that dude down. Yeah. But apparently, that's not among his magical abilities. Like, and, and we needed a rainbow in order to find the pot of gold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that doesn't. I don't think that works. I don't think that makes any sense. I don't. Movies. <laughs> no, Audrey. God damn it! This is reality. I'm the leprechaun. <laughs> I'm the leprechaun. That never happens at any point. I was really. He does sad. say, "I am a leprechaun." He does say that. He does say. I'm. I'm trying to remember. There was a thing or two else that he said that was very explanatory and helpful. But me going back. <laughs> Gotta get me going back. <laughs> yeah, I think. I think. I think he said that once or twice. Right. Right. Yeah. No. It's. It's. I. Uh, this this just I, but mostly he's just pretending to be other people. Yeah. And again, it's like he can teleport and Im, Im, uh, Im, impersonate anyone else at any time. Maybe it's only people he's killed who he can impersonate because all we really see is the oh, wife. But the, what about the the little girl calling from the crate to lure everyone over to the crate? Well, I assume he killed a little girl at some point. Was that in the prequel to Leprechaun? No, no, I mean, he's been alive for 590 years before the movie starts, so, you know, I'm assuming he's murdered a little girl and a cat along the way. Fair enough. Because the the only people who we, I don't think we ever see him impersonate someone who's still alive, do we? I, again, I, I, the only thing, the only reference I could have had would have been, like, a little girl that we didn't see killed. Yeah, so a lot of things that just didn't add up here, and he just really is just a dick, just an absolute dick. The kind of looks like a troll. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Looks like a troll. Oh, I think my favorite line from him is, "I smell some tea brewing," <laughs> which I guess they threw in to set up the fact that he appears at the beginning of the next scene with a tea a tea cozy set. But I really didn't think we need the Irish love that, that berries tea. Right, right. The Irish also love cereal. Apparently, mm -hmm. they had like nine different types of cereals in there. I think something that should have been credited in this film was Jennifer Aniston's hair. It was really a character all of its own. Yeah, I think typically Jennifer Aniston's hair is a character all of its own. <laughs> they, I'm, I'm, I've watched one episode of Friends, so I don't, I, I don't remember her in it, but. She at one point pulls it, she does that girl thing that always drives me crazy, right? She takes her giant mane of hair and pulls it back and then just lets it go. And it's like, what did you think that would accomplish? It's not going to stay there. You didn't put a, a hair holder on it or anything. <laughs> That's this typical girl move that I see all the time. Just like, oh, let me just put this back and then move my hands away because I'm not going to hold them there forever, of course. <laughs> They... Didn't you forget your glasses today? I <laughs> I take that very personal. <laughs> I have I have never seen you do this. I am just saying it's it's a most commonly a girl thing. Though in this movie, the guys kind of do it too. They're I like, oh, feather, let me just run thing. my hand through my feathered hair to get it out of the way for a brief second, and then then I can kind of pattern the entire room and go back to go back to existing. But yeah, her hair it's very big. And speaking of costuming, her costume. Oh yeah, leather jacket in the desert. Right. Short shorts, blossom yeah. style, where they have seems to be like a um, quilt I, pattern. Yeah, yeah. Quilt I, pattern, of fl flower, floral on the front, I banana thought, on the butt. Right. I thought it was kind of Tetris on the front, and then yeah, like literally a banana peel right on her ass. Right on her ass. Right like, on the crack. Like when you you saw it the first time, you thought she had split her pants. Yeah, I did. That's really not a look you want to go for. But banana on the ass. <laughs> right. I maybe a horizontal banana. You could probably As pull that out. <laughs> but a vertical banana right over the ass? No, that just doesn't. It's not. My mind goes somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> but that's. But I don't. I yeah. It's it's at some point you think she would have at least thrown on a skirt or something. Yeah, put on some tights. 
some tights. I that would take a while. But I'm sorry, I'm just, leather jacket in the desert with short shorts. Well, it's Thank it's it's, it's in the desert. Friend. It's in the desert at night, so I can buy the leather jacket. But the short shorts. I mean, she must have been freezing out there for those. I mean, the character. I don't know where the hell they were when they were shooting this, but suppose it looks like the desert. And, I think it was Hollywood. <laughs> just guessing. Probably. Just guessing. Yeah, probably this was somewhere Sounds in Southern strange. California. <laughs> I, I was never quite clear on how real the place was, especially, like, my favorite thing was where they threw out some obviously dead grass and then shone a green light on it to make it seem like a clover patch. They're only green in this whole movie <laughs> with a clover patch. Right, right. Appropriately set next to a wishing well. And I don't know if you noticed, but in scenes before that, when Jennifer Aniston would run past that area, her lower legs would turn green. <laughs> And I kept noticing that and thinking... Again, I've did... lost my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I kept thinking, why Why do they have a green light out there? And it's because that was the clover patch area. So they obviously the called Clovers like, are green. Clover, entire clover patches are green. I love that moment where she finds the four-leaf clover, which is gigantic and would have stood oh, out yeah. like a sore she's, thumb She's about to patch. give up. Right, right. And then you have to believe... Oh, Ozzy, yeah. Yeah, says the, the... Real smart Ozzy. Says the slightly mentally challenged guy who has a young friend, and they have very of mice and men moments, oh. which is a little weird, and the music kind of reflects that. And I love the fact that the kid, who's wearing almost a Freddy Krueger shirt, introduces him as, oh, this is Ozzy, he's my friend. And they find the gold, and he wants to buy a new brain for Ozzy. Right, he wants to make Ozzy smart. That's so... It's so... Cute. Weird. <laughs> He's my friend. He likes to pet the rabbits. He likes to paint himself. Right, there are three you... guys that paint. <laughs> I don't even want to ask what happened out here. <laughs> that was a great line, too. Because obviously Ozzy had spilled paint on himself. That was what had happened. And everybody treated it as if it was some sort of Machiavellian plot that went awry. It was like the Red Wedding from Game of Thrones or something. And it's like... Ozzy spilled some paint on himself. That was another thing. Paint kept appearing and disappearing. Oh, yeah, that's right. From blue everyone's house. arms. The worst color blue. It looked like, um, uh, what was it? Uh, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Captain America, blue and red. Right. It, house. It, and it was originally white, so it looked like they were going for an American flag yeah. look. But, for instance, Jennifer Aniston only paints with red. Yet she has blue on her arms throughout the entire movie, which kind of led me to think something happened off screen with yeah. her and uh, her and biceps. Yeah, which uh, that's a good name for him. I biceps. like it. <laughs> Purple He's, shirt biceps. Right. He had. Oh my god! I had bicep envy like he was crazy. Really strong. Yeah, he was. He was impressive. I mean, I let him hold my paintbrush in the day of the week. I mean, I you know just run my hands along his upper arm a few times just to, you know, feel that. I mean, right? I mean, that's... I let him paint Fifty Shades. <laughs> I mean, that's not weird, right? <laughs> Fifty Shades of God Ugly Blue. That's what this movie could be retitled. Yeah. Jennifer Aniston in... Fifty Shades. So, they find the four-leaf clover in the patch, which that's the one thing that can kill the leprechaun, which we find out from... O'Grady. Right. Who, and who appears at the end. Who the leprechaun doesn't kill but does impersonate. And oh, he so did it's not. Steal his gold. So it's not just people that he kills because he does impersonate O'Grady. Okay, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So he doesn't kill him, he shoves him up above the elevator. Yeah. And, very and, Silence of the Lamb style. <laughs> yeah. Then impersonates him. I really think the leprechaun is like, I just like killing and impersonating people and shining shoes. I don't think he really gives a shit about his gold. I think he could have gotten back that last piece and been like, okay, okay, okay. Now, this is Ronald Reagan working at McDonald's, all right? What do you guys think of this, okay? <laughs> I think I, I think he really just wants to go out like on a stand-up circuit and make shoes. Yeah. So after, after they get the four-leaf clover and O'Grady has said you have to press it against his skin, that's the thing that will kill him. Jennifer Aniston stands by a door in a barn... Warwick Davis in a leprechaun outfit runs past her less than, I would say, a foot and a half away. Yeah. And she just stands there and goes, oh. Totally forgot she had a four-leaf clover in her hand. <laughs> Even though she's holding it out there like a weapon for the entire... And so 
what they eventually do is the the young kid Dennis the menaces him mm -hmm. right in the mouth takes his gum out of his mouth and right wads right. wads of four leaf clover in there yeah which that was a little odd too since Ozzy was the only one we ever see chewing gum throughout ah. the entire movie so maybe he yanks it out of Ozzy's mouth maybe and and <laughs> shoots the four leaf clover right into the leprechaun's right in the throat belly. they then that then they shoot him down into the well then gasoline is poured into the well, which has water in it. <laughs> one can of gasoline, one like little, I don't know, like three gallon can of gasoline sure. is poured down in there. A match is dropped into the well, and then a fireball. A bluey. Approximately the size of the Death Star exploding. <laughs> that curves. No one stands back, by the way. <laughs> right. That guy limps away kind of quickly because he gets a bear trap used on him. Oh, that's another thing. The props that just come out of nowhere in this film. We have, let's see, a tricycle shows up. I think the best part about the tricycle showing up out of nowhere is when it shows up out of nowhere in the coin shop, uh -huh. which was apparently also a pawn, a pawn shop, shop. But, uh -huh. but we're never told that. The tricycle shows up and the guy's like, huh, that's weird. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then he's killed by a pogo stick that's pogo also stick. in the coin shop for no apparent reason. And, again, he didn't steal all the leprechaun's gold and might have given it to the goddamn leprechaun if he hadn't just murdered him. And I'm trying to remember, did, he had a quip about him, too, right? Which part? Oh, the death by Pogo Stick. Yeah, yeah he bounce said, back and no, he'll bounce back in no time. <laughs> right, after murdering him, which seems, I mean, needlessly cruel. Because it's like, no, he won't. You just collapsed his chest with a Pogo Stick. Well, he is the leprechaun. No one said he had to be nice. Somebody had stolen his gold. <laughs> Somebody had. They're He's not a very nice guy. Is really not. He's not. So yeah, that's our that's our climax. And then we pull out, it's very like the ending of Scream. We pull out and the cops are showing up and it's morning. And instead of a newscast, we get another fucking poem from this <laughs> bitch. <laughs> and it's not really good or exciting, but essentially he's like, oh, I'll be back one day and get my gold. And it's like, well, this entire thing was pointless then, totally, wasn't it? obviously he didn't die. So he's down there at the bottom of this well, all burned and fucked up, at writing poetry. But after he's, he's melt, his face is melted off, and he is just a small bit of what he once was. He is essentially like... A burnt cookie with slime on it. <laughs> yes. So that's not, that's not where I'm, he, he's like a 15 year old yeah. who thinks he's an artist trapped in this well. And he's like, oh, one day the gold shall be mine. You twisted evil creatures I'll who want to steal. This farm. You, all you fucking whores out there picking clover like sluts, like the <laughs> sluts that you are. I'll get back at you. Yeah. And You'll see. <laughs> Yes, you wait. <laughs> I'll have my pot of gold and I can do whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> also, I'm going to bring integrity back to the gaming industry. Just you wait and see. So that's that's how it ends. And it's kind of uh, an anticlimax, I guess yeah, I would say. I enjoyed it. Yeah, huh. well, I, you're apparently but easily I, pleased. I, I don't have to wear glasses. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's because your hair was in your eye the entire time. That's actually time. true. I need to do that Jennifer Aniston move, the one, um, unfortunately you'd fault me for. <laughs> there, it stays. You gave yourself kind of a lion I, in there for a moment, which was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm now, the leprechaun. Now if you just never move again. I'm the leprechaun. I keep seeing that piranha over there and being frightened now. You like, you're going to start, no, 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 because that's... It's going to bite your ear and make a shoot. <laughs> Get a ship. <laughs> All right, so to end this out, Audrey, what one thing would you change to make this movie much better? Um, and again, I think we kind of um, highlighted over this earlier was the 10 years that didn't need to pass but in the story. Since O'Grady was in his uh, rest home, we could have probably just killed him. And yeah, the Dan and Dan's not being in relation. I mean, it just didn't make a lot of sense. I think we could have just cinched that up a little bit better. I agree. My one recommendation is I think they should have let Warwick Davis act. Um, you know, I've seen, I mean, most of us have seen Warwick Davis and other stuff, Willow, etc. And it's like, and <laughs> Audrey just had the moment of realization, <laughs> figuring out who Warwick Davis is. 
you know, he... Uh, he wants a lock of hair <laughs> for his travels to go get his pot of gold. Mad Mortigan. Um, he, he's a good actor, and I think... I, I'm pretty sure every single line of his was ADR, and half of them were him doing other... were the Leprechaun doing other voices, which means it wasn't Warwick Davis's voice. Warwick Davis is a really good actor, I think. Allowing the Leprechaun to be more Warwick Davis rather than it being just the suit probably would have made the Leprechaun character way more endearing and way more interesting, and I'm assuming that's where they're going to go Yeah, I'm later. just really curious, yeah, where it's going to be going next. Because somehow it gets to outer space, and then ice T's involved. Yes. And it's like, <laughs> it seems like that should be the other way around, It's actually right? very ice tea. You know how the Irish love their tea. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that about covers... <laughs> Sorry. everything for now so until next time this is michael t bradley and audrey Ivancy. have a good one Bye. i want to remind everybody if you have feedback if you watch this movie if you think we missed something big if you want to add to the conversation feel free to write to info at iceonmars.net you have been listening to ice on mars 